I'm going to try to make a video as simple and quickly as possible to show you how to replace the water pump on a 2011 to 2020. This is a Jeep Grand Cherokee. This sounds like something you want to try to tackle yourself. Welcome to the Bald Eagle 242 YouTube channel. Stick around and I'm going to show you how to get this thing changed. The first thing you'll want to do is drain the fluid out of the radiator. To make that drain quicker, just loosen your radiator cap up. Next thing you'll want to do is take these hose clamps loose to remove this air box. These hose clamps are 5 16 and this bolt right here is 10 millimeter. Pull this end off here and there is a wire right here that has to be disconnected. Just squeeze this right here. You can usually do it with your thumb or finger. And then you can get this out of here where you can see down in there real well. Next thing I'll do is pop this clip right here loose on your radiator hose. That way we can fold this up out of the way and we're going to take these bolts out right here. You do not need to take this clamp off right here since you're going to be replacing the water pump. We can just take the bolts out of the thermostat housing and just pull the whole thing out of the way. And these are 13 millimeter or half inch. Either one will work. Once you get that out of there, you can just pull this right off. And there's our thermostat. Somebody's been here before us. We'll clean off all that silicone off of there. And you can just take this and just fold it up here on top of the engine out of the way somewhere. Next thing you'll want to do is take a 3 8 ratchet, put it down here on the tensioner. You want it so it's tightening, so you're pushing it towards the driver's side of the car. Push that down like that, and that takes your tension off your belt. And then you can just pull this belt off of here. From this point forward, what I like to do is take my brand new water pump and set it up here on the top. And as I pull each bolt out, I will transfer that bolt up here to the new water pump these bolts are different lengths and if you get them wrong they either will not reach to tighten down the way they're supposed to or you could punch a hole through something if you try to put one of the longer bolts back in the shorter holes next thing I'll do is go ahead and take the tensioner off go ahead and get it out of the way so we can get to the rest of the bolts behind it and this bolt is a 5 8 when you go to put this back on just be aware of this little notch right here fits in that hole right there. Just take this nut off right here just to get this little bracket out of our way. This plug here can be a little tricky for your temperature sensor, but you need to pull this red part up like that. And then right down here, I'll show you better when I get this off of here, but there's a little tab right here you have to push in to pull that off. So you pull this up and then that little tab I don't know how well you can see that, but there's a little tab right there. It has to be pushed in to slide this off. Next, I'll take this pulley off that's right below your thermostat here. And this is a half inch or a 13 millimeter. I know I catch hell for saying that. It's actually a 13 millimeter, but I know a lot of people that watch my channel don't necessarily have a full set of tools. So 13 millimeter, half inch will generally get you there with you need to. Half inch is just slightly tighter. And then what I'll do is just put that on the new pump there and just a couple threads in there. On this little tube here that runs down to the front, there's a 10 millimeter bolt right here. Go ahead and take that out. That lets us lift this up enough to get it out of the way. And be careful with this one. This one is easy to twist off if that's really tight. Then you can just take a screwdriver. We're trying to pop that out right there. And be very careful you don't push too hard on this or you can bend or collapse this little pipe. And it should just pull right up out of the way and just get that out of there so we can slide that pump off. One thing I'll point out here too, this o-ring is damaged on this so when we replace this water pump, it's a good idea to have an o-ring available here. If you're buying an OEM water pump, it should come with this, but if you're buying one of the cheaper aftermarkets, it's not going to come with this o-ring. Next thing you want to do is pull this hose clamp off this bottom hose here, and this one can be pretty tight. A pair of channel locks usually works pretty good. Just get that down far enough so it's no longer up there on your pump. It can be a little stubborn sometimes. I'll go ahead and pull this sensor out here too while it's still mounted on here. This is a 19 millimeter. And again, if you bought an OEM pump, your new one probably came with a new sensor. Since I'm cheap, I bought the aftermarket and it did not come with any of these sensors or any of the extra things that you would get with the OEM. All of the bolts around this pump are 13 millimeter. The only thing that's not is this stud and this is a 15 millimeter. I'll go ahead and take this out first. And again, I will do this bolt for bolt. So the hole I took that out of, I'll put it right back in this pump so that when I go to put this together, I'll pull this out one by one to make sure I get every bolt back in the same hole on the new one. All right, and I'll zip all these bolts out, not counting that stud, there's 10 bolts, so 11 total. And again, I'm gonna leave these where they're at. One by one, I'll start right here above the thermostat. So I'll pull this bolt out, put it right above the thermostat housing on this one. Just come all the way around it and just continue to do that until I get all my bolts in the correct holes. You can see how some of these are longer than others. So you have to make sure you get them in the right spots. Really long one there on the bottom. 
right underneath this uh, idler pulley. So we got all our bolts in here. I'll just set this back there out of the way. And once we get this one off, we'll transfer all the bolts from that one to the old one. Put the new one on here, put the bolts back in it where they belong. When you're going to take this off, find a good spot to pry on it. You may get a little bit of water running out down below, so just be ready for the mess from that. Just have some rags ready or whatever. All right, and once you get all your bolts out of here, about the only thing that'll hold you up here, this little pipe here, you just need to pull that up out of the way. And then that'll slide right out of there. You can see from the silicone on there, somebody else has been in here and replaced this because they do not come factory with that silicone on them. Generally on these water pumps, you'll notice that this bearing gets loose or wears out. This one, I don't notice that. You can see right here, I think this one was probably leaking right around here because if you look at the shaft on this thing, this shaft has no play in it. I mean, that's tight as can be. I can't believe that was leaking down there. Right. Now what I'm gonna do is take all these bolts and transfer these to the old pump so I can keep them lined up. That way they won't fall out while I'm trying to put this one on here, but just take all these one by one, just put them in the old pump, and we'll set this up on top then, and we can transfer them into the pump when we put it on. Then we'll just take this, the old pump, and set it right there with all our bolts where they belong. I was getting ready to show you how I was gonna put some Teflon tape on this plug and transfer it to the new pump, but I got a problem here. That plug is smaller than the hole in the new pump. So what I'm hoping here there's a plug in this hole here, and that's where this sensor goes. So I'm hoping I can take this plug out here, put the sensor in that hole, and then use this plug in that hole. So that's kind of something caught me off guard here. I wasn't expecting that hole to be a different size than the plug I took out of the original pump. This plug here uses a 5 16 Allen wrench, and I'm hoping when we get this out of here, that it'll fit that other hole there. All right, moment of truth. All right, I think we're good to go. So I'll put some Teflon tape on this one, plug that hole, and then hopefully our sensor fits back in that one, which it does. All right, we're good to go here. All right, what I'll do to help seal these threads, is take some Teflon tape, and then we'll just thread this right back down in this hole here. That should seal that up. All right, when you wrap your Teflon tape around something, put it on so that when you screw it in, the tape tightens with the threads and then I'll just screw this in here. Again, this was 19 millimeter. And this is plastic, so you do not want to over tighten this. You just want to tighten it down basically until you feel it bottom out and don't go past it. You can always come back and tighten it up if it leaks, but don't break it. That's all you need. Once you get that off of there, just take a Scotch-Brite pad or a Brillo pad and clean this surface up as much as you can. The better you clean this up, the less chance you're going to have that it's going to leak around that gasket. And you really do not need to use silicone on this. This pump has a rubber gasket that comes with it. And this gasket is designed to actually fit down in a groove. And then that gasket is thick enough that compresses when you tighten this down. And that's what seals that. There is really no need to put any kind of silicone or Permatex around this water pump when you put it on this gasket is designed to seal it without doing that once you get all that scraped off there and I will say if you use a scraper on this too, be very careful you don't gouge that and I just take carburetor cleaner or intake cleaner and just spray that down get as much of that stuff rinsed off of there as you can just let that run back out of there one thing I strongly recommend you do, even if your pump does not come with this O-ring, pull this off of there and at least look at it. This one here, you can see where it's been crushed a few times. They've got silicone on it, but this is something that'll be a frustrating little piece. I have to come back after you get this all together and fix it. I've got an O-ring assortment here, and what I'll do is just take the original O-ring, and then I just match it up to the closest size that I can find here. This is a 110. 111 that one there should stretch out and fit on there so i'll go with the 111 and that should fit everything that i need to do here to get this sealed up nice and tight the other thing you'll want to do here is take your brillo pad and clean this groove out where this might be rusty or have corrosion or something in it get that cleaned up really well before you put your o-ring back on there that just gives you a little extra insurance there that that's not going to leak when you get this back One together time, take your finger and if you feel something raised up there's a spot right there i'm going to go over again but you can feel things that your eye may not pick up on just feel that around there to make sure there's nothing you can feel with your finger and that'll ensure this uh, will seal up really tight once you get that all cleaned up just take your water pump double check this gasket make sure that this is good and embedded down in that groove all the way around here go ahead and start with one of your bolts it's best to take one of the top bolts so you can just hang this thing drop it straight in here and this gives you a good bolt to line it up with so this bolt will go in that hole we'll pull this out of the way and we'll go ahead and get this on here We'll just slide this back down in here just like we took it out. And we'll just get
get one bolt started here so we can hang it and start putting our other bolts back in before we tighten it down. But then we'll just grab our bolts here, same way we did when we took it out. We'll put them all back in the exact same hole they came out of. Now we know we got all our bolts in the right hole. We'll torque them down. The torque specs on these bolts are 21 foot pounds. I would definitely recommend getting a torque wrench. And I'll start in the center with this 15 millimeter stud here to tighten this down to spec. First, what I'll do is just go ahead and get all these to bottom out. Not trying to tighten them down right now. I'm just trying to get them to bottom out so that everything is even when we start. Now the, the tensioner and this idler pulley over here will be the last things we'll put back on this. That just gives us more room to work on everything. What I'll do is just take a little bit of uh, silicone lubricant and spray it on this gasket here, just a little bit, just to help that slide down in there a little better. Once you get that back down in there, you can go ahead and put your bolt back in here to hold that in place. And then we'll go ahead and torque these down as close as we can get them to 21 foot-pounds. If you have a center bolt, always start with the center, then work your outside centers and just tighten them down evenly. So you might want to take this to like 10 pounds, 10 foot pounds all the way around, come back to 15, and then finally take it to your 21 or your final foot pound. After you get those all torqued down, take your idler pulley here, and make sure when you tighten this one down, it's up on that lip. If you try to tighten it down right here, you'll break this plastic pulley. So that needs to be up on that little ledge or that lip. Next, you can plug your temperature sensor wire back in here. And I did turn that so it's easier to see this on the top here for the next guy. Make sure that locks into place. And then you've got your tensioner. And again, make sure this knob right here, this little peg, fits into that hole right there. Once you get that bolt started, you can get that in there and get it to drop down in that hole there. If you took this little bracket off too, don't forget to put this back on here. Something else you need to look at here before you put your thermostat back in, especially if you pull this off like this, you never look at the underside of that. But get this up here where you can get that really clean too and get all the silicone and gasket. You can see here where the old seal came apart on this thing. So if you're gonna go to all this trouble, I would definitely put a new seal, a new uh, thermostat also. Stock thermostat in the Hemi engine is 203 degrees, at least on this Jeep. All right, when you get your new thermostat, part number 7416-203, the 203 tells you what the temperature is on it. I also saw one for 180 degrees, which unless you're tuning this thing, I have a way to adjust the computer to run for the 180 degree thermostat, I'd stick with the 203 stock thermostat. All right, when this goes back in here, this part goes down in the water pump. Make sure that sits all the way down in there. Doesn't really matter which way you turn this. All right, and then before we put our hose back up, I'll go ahead and put this belt back on. I don't see a diagram anywhere underneath here, but it's usually pretty easy to figure these belts out. If you've got a flat pulley, the flat side of the belt runs on the flat pulley. If you've got a V pulley, the V side of the belt runs on the V pulley. Try to get you guys here where you can see. It's not going to be easy to try to show you this. Once I get this on here, I'll show you where I'm going. All right, when you put this back on, it goes around the crank with the rib side on the crank pulley, then comes up around your tensioner pulley here on the back. So your flat side goes around the tensioner pulley, makes a really tight loop around your alternator flat side underneath this idler pulley up over the water pump pulley the rib side down on the water pump pulley and then around your power steering pump here with the rib side down and then it runs straight down to your air conditioner there on the bottom back over to the crank pulley or harmonic balancer i did put that back on there and i failed to show that on camera so make sure you get that back on there make sure your new thermostat is set all the way down in there and this hose here is one of the last things you want to hook back up after you get your belt and everything in there and you do not need to put any silicone or anything on this this has got a seal on it that's designed to work by itself with no silicone i didn't check the specs on these but i'd say they're about 20 to 21 uh, foot pounds also Just double check everything down here and then while you're down here go ahead and screw this back in so when you add your fluid in it doesn't run out and that just needs to be hand tight that's just plastic don't over tighten that that's pretty much the full story on replacing this water pump we still got to put the air box back on get this wire hooked up and i'll top it off with antifreeze here go ahead and fill this up and then i'll check it for leak i'll spare you guys the boring watching that i think most people that have a little bit of mechanical aptitude can probably do this job it's really not that hard i mean for a water pump 
probably about three or four hours and a lot of that was just because i was taking time to really get some video here and film it for you guys so anyway guys thanks for watching if you enjoyed this video check out the next video i got right here i've got a lot of other stuff for you guys to check out till next time